A kia ora tātou, nā mihi o te wā ki a koutou katoa, a ko tai mai a Ipurangi Ei, ki te tau toko ta kaupapa o tēnei rā, ko Anaru White talking with. Hi everyone, my name's Anaru White, I'm joined by Derek Wimmer. Kia ora Derek. Kia ora Anaru. Hey, um, really good to have you along here to this uh, Facebook live chat around uh, Cause 10 Trends. And just before we do, just to everyone out there, the invitation from the start is if you have any questions, comments, thoughts, then please, invitation, jump them into the uh, comments box and we'll uh, take note of them. We'll address them to them today and um, if not, we'll make sure we'll follow up with them uh, as well. So, Cause 10 Trends is quite timely that they've been released, especially with the announcement uh, just recently around the new uh, digital technologies yeah. or Hangarau Matahiko uh, coming up. So Derek, first question is now obviously around the Cause 10 Trends for 2017. And um, so what's different in this year's trends, Derek? Quite a bit, really. Um, we've had a, a lot of fun putting this year's trends together, aren't we? The, yes. um, building on what we did over the last couple of years, where we framed them around those five key future-focused areas sure. in the middle. So a couple of key things that have changed this year. One is we've put a lot more emphasis on uh, explaining and describing the, those middle areas, those trending okay. areas, which mm -hmm. makes them the trends. Um, and the second thing is the the illustrations of those trends, the ten things that illustrate sure. this year. One of those is is uh, being selected because it's the kind of the immediate and now. Yeah. It's the sort of thing that we have to get to grips with. And the second one is a little bit more on the horizon. Mm -hmm. But both of them together serve to show how that's a, a kind of a trending area for sure. educators to okay. be aware of. So building on from that, why does core education publish these trends? Yeah, well, it's, it's um, I guess, in two or three reasons. One is it's our own internal PD. Yeah. You know, it's a part of who we are. We, exactly. we, we're a company, we say we push the boundaries. And so for our staff internally, it's really important that we're thinking about what's on the horizon and thinking. And I guess that's a, it's a, what's particularly important about that is mm -hmm. our response to change. Yes. You know, it's very easy to feel like you're under an avalanche all the time and that it's constantly just sweeping you away and you've got no control over what's happening. The trends and our, our discussion around those are our way of sort of just trying to not predict the future but to kind of see where those trajectories sure. are heading. So sure. it's not so much of a surprise when it hits us. Okay, really. great. Yeah. And I can just see uh, there's been more people just come in, so just a cure if everyone who's just jumped in as well. And please, invitation, if you have any questions or thoughts, just jump them into the comment box and uh, Derek and myself will... Uh, respond to those as well. So just cure to everybody. Building on from that note about, uh, I suppose, that internal PRTD, uh, uh, our chance to be thought-provoking. Um, how are these trends useful uh, for schools and I know um, for our experiences for other organisations who have used yes. them uh, as well? So I guess that that's a follow-on then from the way that we, we mm. find that useful inside. Sure. We thought, why not capture this so that it's then useful to others outside? And um, over the years we've been doing the trends, it's, it's been really rewarding for, for me personally and for others in the team who mm -hmm. have been involved to see how much feedback comes mm. from people who are saying, hey, we look forward to these coming each year because we use them to start discussion sure. in our staff or in our community. Yep. We've got, um, we've even got some universities um, mm. in New Zealand, but internationally we get contacts every year from universities who use the 10 trends as a part of a course they, they, they teach and so forth. So I guess... People have a curiosity exactly. about what, what the future holds sure. and I guess the, the contribution we'd like to make is um, just helping consolidate some of that thinking and give a little bit more explanation uh, to that and to um, invite people to join the conversation. Wonderful, mm -hmm. wonderful. Yeah, it's good just to share uh, wider and as you're saying just invite those conversations. Just thinking about the timing of this and uh, what's been real topical lately yeah, over yeah. the last two weeks is the announcement from Mr. Uh, Minister Kay around the new digital technologies curriculum and I guess the question there is um, how do they relate, how do the 10 trends relate to that? Yeah, well it's, it's interesting timing <laughs> because we've been working, this year we got held up for a whole lot of reasons so sure. we're a bit late, uh, that later than we might otherwise mm -hmm. but it, Mm -hmm. It actually worked out quite well in a way. I, I had the privilege of being at the, the presentation of the Digital Technologies curriculum last week and the thing that struck me was there was a lot of talk there about these new technologies sure. and a lot of talk about how technology is taking over all sorts of facets of our okay. lives including our jobs and so a lot of the thinking ended up being kind of quite myopic in my view about you know the robots are coming so what are we going to do about it you know and 
that's, that's a part of the conversation, of course, right? Of but course. I think the more significant and more important thing is to start thinking, so the so what? Yes. You know, they, they, like there's a big saying, technology is neutral until you add humans in the mix, right? And, and part of being in a super technological world is understanding that those who have been involved in creating it and those of us who use it mm. are equally responsible for defining the nature of its use and, and how, it's, how it's implemented. And to me, that's the significance of the trend. So in terms of the technology curriculum, yeah. there's, uh, there are several, I guess, pushes mm. for that. One is very much about skills for future employment. You know, and you're not going to ignore that, but if that's all we're introducing the curriculum for, we're in a bit of trouble, right? Uh, because actually, the skills, if we try and set up a curriculum that's going to teach you some skills, yeah. by the time you've left school, those skills are redundant, you need exactly. new ones, right? Exactly. So we're looking at something that's much more holistic, much more integrated, much more transdisciplinary, mm -hmm. that sort of thing. Okay. And so these trends, uh, many of them kind of point to the fact that this is already happening. You know, this mm -hmm. is the nature of the world that we're living in. And... Um, uh, hopefully there's some guidance there that would help people who are looking and say, oh, new digital technologies curriculum, how do I find more hours in the timetable for exactly, that? Exactly. You know, stop thinking like that, okay. start thinking more creatively and flexibly. And I guess by building out my point, well, what I'm interested to in, know, because I know we've got a lot of educators out there and teachers, and that's probably one thing that's going to be pertinent for them in this, with the new digital technologies curriculum and what's already a busy time and a, and a, you know, a really uh, heavy curriculum it is, um, how can teachers, I suppose, respond to, engage, and um, I suppose be empowered so they can respond to this uh, rapid change? Yeah, I think um, for me that's one of the reasons why the 10 trends and mm -hmm. the focus on trends becomes important because, <clears throat> you know, last year, uh, last week at least, there was the announcement there's sure. going to be a lot of money for professional development uh, in terms of this, and that's all well and good. Yes. But if the professional development is only to introduce new skills to an existing workforce, then it's, it's not going to get us far, because we've tried that process in the past. Exactly. The, the real crunch here is that this is change. Yep. And we know from lots of studies and about t human behaviour that uh, the human condition is such that when faced with change, mm. one of the ways that we can mitigate the, the kind of the fear and the, the, the run away from it kind of approach is to ensure that there's an adequate level of informed thinking about that. Yeah. And if you think about trends, if you are looking to the horizon and you have a sense of expectation of what may or may not occur and more importantly why it occurs and what's influencing it, then when the change comes it's less of a surprise yes. and you're more, you have a greater capacity to accept and adopt that. Mm -hmm. right? mm -hmm. and for me, that's where the trends contribute not only to individuals, but why they become important to stimulate conversations sure. in staff rooms and mm -hmm. online and that sort of thing. And those discussions that you're going to get in staff room and one that's um, to put out there, what about the basics there? What about numeracy, writing, literacy, and what about those? Well, it's pretty hard to deny. I mean, <laughs> they're still the basics, <laughs> yep. right? Eh? Mm -hmm. But um, I remember years ago, uh, the Australians in Queensland introduced a scheme over there where they dared to introduce the concept of sure. new basics. Mm -hmm. And I think that's part of what we've got to be looking at. Our world is much more complex, much yes. more sophisticated, much more integrated and so forth. And so whilst we, um, we will always need those fundamentals of communication and fundamental literacy and numeracy, mm -hmm. we have to acknowledge there's, some, there's an expansion to that now exactly. that we need to take into account. Right? Exactly, and I guess it's a good time for... Uh, kia ora, Kiri Thompson. Um, just to have you on board here, Kiri. Uh, he's just um, made a note there about the integration of digital technology uh, means um, it's not an add-on. Yeah, I think I, I did a blog post last week about this mm. because I mm. was in discussion with someone and I heard them over, you know, overheard them talking about, oh, this new curriculum, how are we going to get more hours in the timetable? Exactly. You know? yep. And I remember in the 90s particularly, this was a big discussion in schools, you know, as a new curricula were coming and how do we get more time? And, and then we want a driver education and health education sure. and sex education. And we were crammed. Yep. And I think the, the big change in thinking that has to come along with this emphasis is the fact that you know time's a finite thing yeah. and learning now needs to go back to what some of those early educational philosophers at the turn of the last century were talking about, the sure. much more holistic, uh, activity-based, yes. um, experiential, collaborative, mm. all that sort of thing. Um, and in that, it's going to just require quite a different focus from teachers yes. uh, in terms of 
ensuring those basics are still addressed, but ensuring that those lifelong capabilities are addressed as well. Exactly. And uh, Fiona there as well just puts about the inclusive practice as, as well. Yeah, well, I think, uh, Fiona, I'd agree with you. It, a lot of our one-size-fits-all approach mm. that we've had in education in the past, of course, mm. has, um, mm. has excluded so many learners. Exactly. Um, and this, this approach that actually shifts the ownership of learning to learners and is more embracing of, of yeah. a variety of approaches holistic. and technology, holistic, yes. it, it does do exactly that. Exactly. So techno technological change, is it a good thing? <laughs> well, I come back to my saying, you know, technology, uh, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's neutral. Yeah. Um, you know, it becomes good or bad when it does, you know, it, it's the human impact. So, mm -hmm. I mean, we've seen this through human history, fire, the wheel, these sure. are all technologies that have changed us. Mm -hmm. I think, though, that the big difference and why these trends become so important, the big difference now is that we don't have to wait a hundred years for the next technological exactly. advance. These things are happening exactly. and they are cascading upon us and they're happening all the time. And so the, whether or not it's a good thing, I think it's the wrong question. The, the question is really to examine our own behaviour and use around yep. that and understand that actually technology, to quote Neil Postman, when you add a new technology, you don't just change something, yep. you change everything. Exactly. So it's having that understanding. And secondly, mm -hmm. that in changing everything, technology is an amplifier and, and it amplifies both the good and the bad. Exactly. And so there is always going to be an upside and a downside to this, mm -hmm. which is why, again, coming back to the trends, it's so important that we're engaged in these sorts of discussions. Exactly. And just in that whole picado, that whole uh, chat we've just had around about, um, I suppose, the change and who's involved, Kiri's just made a real pertinent comment around uh, the involvement of the community, community and involvement of Fano in this change as well. Yeah, I, mm. and I think that's, Kiri, thanks for that, because I think, you know, is, uh, from the time we've had tomorrow's schools, there's been yeah. a big emphasis in New Zealand on yep. having community and whānau involvement. Mm. And I think we've, we've kind of fallen into the trap of accepting that that's kind of inviting parents along and giving them their say and having voice. And all of that's been quite encouraging and good. But w I think we have to flip that much more now and understand that actually school is only a component of the broader society and the broader context within which learning and these sort of discussions have exactly. happen. And um, so more important than ever before, that community and whānau involvement yeah, exactly, is, is there. Exactly, exactly the partnerships there. Should Derek, I'm just kind of thinking one thing about there, should we focus in on the negative impacts of this as well, this change? Well, I'm not sure. We, we, we should focus on them as a part of the whole, okay. all right? Mm -hmm. um, you, you take uh, the use of social media, yeah, for example. Perfect. I mean, Sometimes. social media is... Um, it's exploded, it's taken off, it's in every part of our lives. Um, so on a positive side, after the earthquakes in Christchurch, the use of Facebook of and social media became the lifelong that, mm. that held families together and enabled schools to go. Um, uh, we've seen social media is now connecting people in ways that we've never seen before and uh, enabling that sort of immediacy of response. Yeah. Uh, all that sort of So that's good. Yes. But it's also at the root of rumour spreading and scaremongering. We see bullying occur. Mm -hmm. This is a classic example of that amplification in both areas. Mm -hmm. And so it's not about the technology, it's about our behaviour. Yes. And if we don't have those perspectives on it, then we, we fall in the trap exactly. of, of just exactly. hiding our head in the sand. And you know? the knowledge and the education that comes around with that. And back to Kerry's comment about everyone being involved in it as well. Every, yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. Fano learning about the change and, and the reasons for it as well. Yeah. Um, just in your experience there, just thinking about there, some practical examples. Do you have an example? You talked about how universities overseas have uh, used it, but more so thinking about schools in New Zealand and how they might use it for... Uh, I suppose perhaps their classroom practice or even their PD focus in schools. Have you got a story or an example that you've worked alongside or have you heard of school how they've used the 10 trends uh, to support yeah, them? Well, I've heard two or three stories <laughs> actually. I, um, there's a secondary school that uh, contacted me a few years ago and as far as I know they're still doing that where they actually take the trends and in their, I'm not sure which class it was, it may have been a social science or something, but they actually give it to students. So this is at senior secondary and the senior secondary okay. students use it as a springboard to go off and investigate and bring back. And I, I think that's a great idea, yeah. you know, it's a, so a resource that way. Um, talking in a primary school just last year, who, who do a similar thing with their staff, and in fact they then took that to a community meeting. Sure. So again, it was that springboard and sharing it around mm. with the, the community in Fano, as Kerry said. Exactly. So some Good. really good examples, I think, there. Mm -hmm. But the other way is... Um, the areas that are of particular interest, you don't have to look at the whole 10. I mean, that's the, yeah. the beauty of it. There may be something that's impacting or coming up in a study. You can just 
it's slice good, down and, and focus on that one area for a while. It's prioritise it for yeah. your situation or for your context as That's well. Right. Yeah, exactly. One of, the, one of the things we have done, um, just following on from that, Anna, is this year we've made a much more deliberate attempt, mm. and on the website you can do this, to link all of the illustrations and examples that we've had in yep. those trending areas together. Mm. So instead of just focusing on one of these things as if that itself is the trend, yes. we're able to see how that follows through yeah. and, and links, links back mm -hmm. you know, to a progression over years. And that, that's part of that important idea that this is not about predictions of particular things, it's yeah. about what's trending, wh where those patterns and exactly, trajectories are. Exactly, yeah. that's it. And just before I ask for your kind of concluding uh, comments there, just to everyone out there again, just a big uh, kia ora and just thanks for your comments and likewise, uh, just before I pass it over to Derek, if you do have any other thoughts or uh, questions uh, for both of us, then please, invitation's always there. But Derek, just uh, some final comments just to conclude uh, from him. Oh, look, I'm absolutely delighted to see them um, being published today. Sure. I'm delighted the timing mm -hmm. uh, in conjunction. I really encourage people to go to the core website yes. and to download the trends. Um, it, it, that you, you have an option to download the whole document. This year, that's one of the big differences. We've published it as a PDF document, so yes. you can take it down and do that, as well as what's online. Um, so over the next few months, the videos will still go up there and there'll be more descriptive material. But we've, we've really tried this year to make it much more immersive and um, informative and able to be used on a different scale. That's great, and it probably builds on what uh, Phil has just uh, typed in there around uh, using the trends to support uh, whānau in the wider school community Absolutely. as well. Yeah, so, you know, spin it out there and um, let, let other, give the, the parents, give them the community the link and let them see that. Um, uh, this is, we'd love to have feedback also on how the trends are being used because that in turn helps exactly. us understand how we can go about it next year. Exactly. And also I see there's a, uh, uh, a request for a link, I'm sure that one of our team will make sure that goes in there for you very soon because that's the important thing. Okay. Yeah, and, and thank you Derek for your your time in this as well and I know, I suppose it's a privilege of we've worked alongside schools and in schools and we're educators ourselves so it's just great to kind of have these uh, these discussions Absolutely. and to support schools as well and there from you can have those discussions as well and uh, you can just see there we've just chucked in uh, the link uh, to the Teen Trends that you can go to as well so thank you to everyone out there. Um, I, I just noticed um, Anne Keneally's gone in there, which prompted me to the, the ongoing conversation within the um, around the ten trends within our connected educator yes. environments. The other thing that I'd encourage people to do, because you may find you may be in a very small school with only a few people to right. talk about exactly. it. Get in there, see what Anne set up in our connected educator environment, and keep this conversation going there. Exactly, and I'm sure Anne will put a link to that as, as well. So yes, please, just from here, keep the communications going. We're here at Core. You can uh, uh, contact us through the website, or obviously via uh, Facebook uh, as well. And uh, yeah, but just I know there's some educators here, some teachers. Uh, it's the last day of term, so we appreciate you taking time Absolutely. out uh, doing that. And um, we know you've got non-contact time, but uh, we. Uh, hope and we trust you get some time to have a bit of a break and whatever that's uh, done as well. So yeah, keep those conversations going. Come to us. We look forward to carrying on for those. So uh, ah. yeah, kia ora koutou, kia ora koutou, kia ora.